Albert Einstein said, and I quote, Keep it as simple as possible and no simpler. Keep it as simple as possible and no simpler. Wow. Keep it as simple as possible, but no simpler. Now that, to me, applies to short game, long game, pretty much every part of the game. But isn't that an absolutely fantastic way to look at things? Keep it simple, but no simpler. So take all the, the hard work out. So I'm at the edge of the green here. I am one, two yards off the green. I've just taken an eight iron. And you can see there that I've put this eight iron. Both of them are within about three feet. Yet at times we quite often grab the most lofted club. So a 58, for example, and try and play the funky shot. You know, I see, I see guys trying to play this sort of shot from here. And that's no use at all. That's not keeping things simple. Technique for that is obviously very hard. So you're having to put in a lot of wrist hinge. You're having to put in a lot of speed. You're having to put in lots of pieces that we don't actually need for the shot. Also, I mean, I, I'm, I'm at fault of this in the past as well, having read about Einstein's um, theories and trying to keep the simplicity of it all. Loft is not your friend when you're one, two yards off the green. Try and keep it as low as possible. So I've done this in the past. I've taken 58 and tried to play a kind of hooky one to try and keep it low and let it run out, which is functional and you can get it to work. Strike becomes harder but there's much more thought has to go in there. There's more technique that you have to learn. So more technique, if you have to learn more technique, it's not exactly keeping it simple, it's adding more pieces to the pie. If we split the pie into two pieces and there was only two pieces to think about, that would be easy. If we've got eight or nine pieces of the pie and we have to make eight pieces, it's a very complicated pie. One, two, keeping it simple. So I only have two yards, I then can carry the ball one, two, maybe three or four yards more onto a nice flat area to let the ball run out. When I let it run out like that, I can see, simply see, how the ball's going to react. So I can read it like a putt. So get the ball as close to the ground as possible. Now, to keep it simple, which is obviously the aim of this video, think about what happens when you take a lofted club to do this. So if I take the lofted club, and I'm trying to play, I like sort of, yeah, I like the idea of that at times, but you have to educate yourself so, so well. I mean, Bubba Watson plays 60 degree from everywhere, but to keep that low, you're having to have an in-to-out path, you're having to take loft off at a dress, so forward shaft lean, you're having to fully roll, full release of the golf club to try and keep the loft off. The weight has to stay on the left side, there's lots of things to think about. That's not simple. Grab an 8 iron, you can even go down to 6 iron. As this video continues, we'll move further away from the green, but let's start with the shortest motion. So we're carrying this roughly 6 yards or so. My weight is on my left side. I'm not going to shift my weight because that's an extra thing to think about or have to do. So I'm just keeping my weight steady on my lead side there. Gripping down the shaft with a club that's got very little loft, so the handle's slightly forward anyway, because that would be my normal impact position. Which means I've kept it simple, because basically when the club sits flat on its leading edge, or on the sole, you can see the shaft leans forward. Did nothing there, but just placed the club how it's supposed to be at impact. There, ball position, middle of my stance, weights on my left foot, and then from there, no wrist hinge at all. Jason Day discussed it as dead arms. I'm not putting a wrist cock in, that's a power accumulator, we don't need to accumulate power. We're just keeping it back and through, almost like a long putt. I look at it like this. If I stuck this under my lead arm, right there, and then gripped it, go back and through. Now I can't bend my wrists there, so it's just back and through. So it's all body turn, dead arms, turn, 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 turn turn. Simple. So there's so few moving parts there, it's incredible. Simple. So few moving parts. Love it. Keeping it as easy as possible. There to there. I'm just turning my body. I've set myself and all I do from there is just turn, just turn, turn. Let it run. It landed. One, two, three, four. Landed here. Ran out. Two and a half feet. I mean, it was just effortless success. <laughs> Again, keep your practice stroke simple as well. Don't think about 
I mean, you've got your landing area, you've set yourself up, think about nothing else. Just let it happen. There. Right. I don't have to think about wrist hinge because there's none. I'll put none in. There we go. Weight's left. Good. There we go. Landed a little bit further than the last one. There. Three and a half feet. There I am. Probably 60 feet away just now. But again, great result. Giving myself a really good chance of an up and down. No thought. No wrist hinge, simplicity. That's a good one. Start it a little bit further left because I know it's going to break right to left. Go in. Go in. Let's move further away from the green. Let's make this harder. So now I'm not actually any further away from the, the flag here, but I've given myself a different shot. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six yards to the green, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, probably twelve yards to my first flat landing area. So the first flat spot's about 12 yards away. So, let's think about this. On the last shot, I could have taken putter, I could have taken six iron. But now on this shot, with having so far to carry to get to the green, you know, I'm carrying almost halfway, 10 yards or so, or certainly a third of the way. I need to grab more loft. Now, I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible as well. So same action as we had with the cane. Take your cane under your arm. And we're going same action there, so we're trying to reduce the amount of wrist hinge. The only thing that's different here is when I follow through to there, I want to make sure that my leading edge of my golf club is at 45 degrees. 45 degree leading edge, if I've turned it over, I've taken loft off through impact. If I have it horizontal on the finish, it means I've added loft. Okay. We'll do another video on this, that's called release patterns. But we're going to try and get this through to 45 degrees. It'll go past that, but I want to go through the 45 degree position. Now that's the only thing I've changed. And the reason I want to be at 45 degrees is because it's putting the natural loft on the golf club through impact to get the height to go that distance. Only thing we're doing different. The swing will be slightly longer, purely because I have further to go and I've got less loft, so the ball's going upwards instead of forwards. But same idea, I've got pitching wedge here. I could probably use nine iron. We'll start with pitching wedge. So same idea, trying to keep this wrist hinge out. Weight's left. Keeping it simple, but no simpler. So simple as possible, but don't get lazy with it. That's what Einstein means. We'll keep it as simple as possible, but don't get lazy. This still has to be structured. So I'm here to there, 45 degrees. There, 45 degrees, there, 45 degrees. I'm trying to put zero wrist hinge in here. My weight's still the same, my ball position's still the same. I come through to 45 degrees, there, and it's ran out a little bit. It's pretty good though, but you can see the leading edge I got to 45 degrees. Now, what gets me to 45 degrees? Is it the hands, is it the wrist? Do I manipulate them? Well, that would be making it more complicated, that's adding more pieces to the pie. I just turned my body, kept my arms quiet, kept my arms quiet, got to 45 degrees there, quiet arms, 45 degrees, it's ran up, so I reduced the length of swing there to reduce the distance of the shot, and it's maybe two feet, three feet, but you can see I finished at 45 degrees, because all I did was turn my body. So my club's here, I turned, turned, and oh look, it's at 45 degrees. I mean, it's so simple. This shot, the ball's below my feet here, so it's going to curve a little bit left to right because of my angle of attack. Also, the green slopes from back to front, which is left to right, as you see. But I'm one, two, I'm 10 yard carry. I don't need my 58 or my 54. I just, let's do this nine iron. Have I got nine iron here? That's eight. So nine iron, obviously less swing than the last time, but still if I can continue through to my 45 degrees, I've just got my normal loft of nine iron on there. Here we go. There it is. Oh, nine iron's the one. So there we go, we're at a foot. We're 45 degrees, and that was purely, purely from turn, turn. I mean, I've done nothing there. That's three feet wide, maybe four. I've done nothing with the body, nothing with the hands, nothing with the arms. I've not made it any more complicated than it has to be. There. I mean, they're all good. Look at that one. Wow. 
45 degrees turn turn let's go further away from the green okay so i'm aware this is a little bit dark because of the sunlight but we have to get the flag in for this so now i am one two three four five six seven 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, wow, there we go, there we go, I'm 30 yards from the flag, 15 to the front edge, 15 to the pin, what do I do, well, I want to land this past the front edge of the green, so I'm going to add more loft, so I need more loft to carry that distance, and also to try and get it to stop a little bit. So I've got my 54 degree wedge here. Basically, the less loft you have in your hands, the less loft you have in your hands, the easier the shot is because it's so simple or it's less complicated because there's a shorter motion. Shorter motion as in less range of motion, so less movement, less further back, less further through. That's not even proper English. I realise it's got dark. I'll try and brighten this up for you. The magic of software. Look at that. It's made the sun come out. <laughs> so same thing, 54 degrees. Ball position, we're just going to go centre again. Weight, we're going to keep it left. There's two things you don't even have to think about. When I take the club back, I'm going to have a zero wrist hinge. However, because we've got more loft, the ball's going higher in the air now. With the correct trajectory, that would come up. That's 54 degrees there, assuming the co correct trajectory at impact and then through, so longer swing. So a longer swing or longer body turn, more rotation, more action, means a wrist hinge will come in, but I'm not physically putting it in. It will happen. It will happen, I'll get to here and all of a sudden something will happen, but I'm not trying to put it in, but I'm also not trying to keep it out. That's the simple side of things. I'm not trying to put wrist hinge in, but I'm not trying to keep it out. Weight left, ball position square, no wrist hinge, turn through. When I turn through, I'm going to 45 degrees, but then I will continue through further because I need the length of swing to get the ball to that target. So I'm hopefully going to carry this about 20, just over 20 yards. There. Doing nothing, nothing with the club. And I've just popped it there. Go in. Popped it there just past the hole. Kept it super simple. Kept the wrist hinge out of it, didn't try and put it in. You guys will be able to see on the video if there was hinge or not. Okay, landed that way too far. It's a harder shot now because we've got a longer swing. So here we go again, so I'm just there, there. Good finishing, that's a good shot. Finishing through the 45 degree position. Now of course, we have to think about expectations, so simplicity, keep it simple but not simpler. <laughs> but expectation has to come down slightly when we get further from the hole. Now I've got one there at about a couple of inches. I've got one at about three feet and one maybe six feet. The six foot ball is the ball that's been furthest away all day. Now I'm expecting that because I'm further back. I am also aware though that I'm doing more talking here as I'm hitting shots, whereas the last ones I was more focused. So bear with me. Keeping the hinge out, nothing's happening. It's just body turn. It's exactly the same as I was doing before, but there's just more turn because there's more loft on the club. Oh, it leapt out. Stop talking when you play. That's brilliant. <laughs> so it leapt out. That was good. Even though the strike never felt quite as good. It's weird golf, isn't it? Did nothing there. Turn. Turn. When I turn through, I'm going through a 45 degree position of the leading edge. Again, good shot. Turn. Through a 45 degree position there, got it a little bit clean. It's fine, they're all good results. So there's the furthest ball away. One, two, three, nine feet was the furthest ball away with that last one. That's um that's all right, isn't it? So, I've kept my 54 degree wedge out. I'm going to go over this hill. Now, of course we need loads of loft. We have to play some funky shot to get over this hill. Well, not really. <laughs> that is not the case. If I, let's just place some balls down here. So I keep my 54 degree club in hand. 
I may open the face just a fraction to add a little bit more loft, but it's the same thing. I don't play a loads of wrist hinge. I don't try and open the face too much and try and play some Hollywood shot. I'm just thinking, okay, where's my landing area going to be? If I can get it here, now this is quite long grass. If it lands on the side of the hill here, it's probably going to, it's not going to shoot away. It's going to be okay. If I land here, it's going to be great. A little bit more loft added, so sh purely just opening the face a little bit. Longer swing back, longer swing through, still coming through what would be 45 degrees. However, you won't really see it because the face is slightly open. So if I've slightly opened the face at a dress before I come through, when I get to this position here, it won't be full at 45 degrees. There it'll be more because the face is already open. If I rewind that, square the face and turn, turn, I'm at 45 degrees, but I've actually slightly opened the face at a dress. And that slight opening of the face at a dress is just to help with this slope that's here which is fine. I just trust the technique. Don't add any extra moving parts, Steve. Just play the game. Turn, turn, added the loft. Turn, turn. Oh, it came out really well. Again, turn, turn. Gone a little bit far with that one. But again, higher tariff shot. We know that, we've got this is the longest swing of them all, even though it's closer, but because there's so much loft on the golf club. Turn, turn, there's the wee land one short, that's fine. Again, turn, turn, lost it, flyer. Still landed well and stopped well. This is a Smithworks wedge, in case you're asking. Um, this one is actually illegal, hence the, the spin I'm getting before anyone asks. But the one I normally game is the legal one. They're good. <laughs> so just to show you what I did there with adding loft. Trying to keep it simple, but not simpler. It's so important. So I would not normally play this shot from here, but it's just purely to show you guys what I've done there. So I, before, when I was 30 yards away, my club face was square, my weight was left, and I went turn body with no wrist hinge, what felt like no wrist hinge, back through to there at 45 degrees. Now that's the same thing as I'm doing there, but I've added loft. So I just opened the face slightly, so now the face points to the right, and just done exactly the same thing. This illegal wedge by Smithworks is class. See the face, that's why it spun so much. They're great wedges, I normally carry the legal one, but this one's illegal, hence the spin I got there. Um, but I don't compete, so I play fun golf, and the last time I was out, I took this one, so it's still in my bag. Face open, of course that brings a bounce into play, but you don't even have to think about that, we're keeping it simple. Back, through with no wrist hinge, there, back, through with no wrist hinge. Lovely. This time we'll try and line myself up with the hole. <laughs> there, back, through with no wrist hinge. Brilliant. You can see I'm at 45 degrees there. This is obviously a shorter shot than the one I was playing. I'll add more loft on this. So there. There. But really trying to make sure that I do nothing. Nothing with the wrists. So passive. Just trying to keep them really quiet. Keeping it simple. Cannot explain that enough. Turn. Turn. Do not have to look up? Turn turn. Use the bounce, of course I caught that heavy, but of course I used the bounce because I'd opened the face. Did I have to think about that? No. I did not. Oh dear. <laughs> so simply, <laughs> when I open the face, the back of the club comes into play more, that's the bounce. So there we go, short game. I mean, it's just such a massive part of the game, isn't it? It's our third shot in golf, but if we can keep it simple, as Einstein says, keep it as simple as possible, but no simpler. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. I'll see you guys at my website, eurekagolfswing.com.